Let's start our journey this evening in the book of Daniel chapter 11. Amen. I'm happy to see all of you. Thank you for coming. It's a blessing to see you. Amen. Verse 32. We read verse 32. Look at your neighbor and tell them the Lord is here. Tell them something godly will come to you. I'm happy to see even the little children ready with notebooks to write, to take notes. Wow. Somebody in this family told us one time that monkey see, monkey do. <laughs> so when children see you pray, you don't need to tell them to pray. They will just start praying. So let's make sure that even at home we create time for prayer and everybody starting with you you go to your knees and you start praying and soon enough your children will follow. May these children be blessed by God. Alright. Let's go to the scripture. Let's read together. One to go. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Look at your neighbor and tell them you will do great things. Amen. Somebody say, I am ready to do great things for God. Importance of spiritual growth. When we grow spiritually, these are the things that we begin to see in our lives. Daniel said, it doesn't matter what is happening to the rest of the people. The devil can corrupt whoever he wants by flattery. But for the people who know their God, they shall be able to do great things. I want to declare tonight that you are in for great things. Something great will begin to happen in your life. The more you love God, the more God will empower you for great things. The more you love the church, the more God will empower you uh, for, great th for great things. Are you shouting amen? Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 22. It is important for us to have knowledge. Knowledge will always put us in a place of power. Knowledge will always, our knowledge of God, and here we are talking about the knowledge of God, not secular knowledge. We are talking about knowing God. The people that know their God, they shall be strong. So knowledge will put you at the place of power. At the place of power. May you begin to enter into your place of power. Uh, I'm not hearing a believing amen. Shout a better amen. You are entering into a place of power. One of the reasons why we keep on confessing these things, it is because it is what you say that come to you. It is what you say that you seize. It is what you say that come to you. So you keep on uh, confessing these things and agreeing 
with the preacher and with the word of God, you will soon begin to manifest and to see those things happening in your life. If you want a witch to, uh, to kill somebody, I've never been to any witch, uh, but I know that if you want a witch to kill somebody or to harm somebody, the only thing they will do is to say some things and tell you to repeat some things. You know that? Are you aware of that? Now, in the kingdom of God, we also operate the same way. Your words are very important. Inside your tongue, there is power. Somebody say power. And that power can either create or destroy. It can either create or do what? or destroy. You can either create your destiny with the words of your mouth or destroy your destiny with the same words of your mouth. And so when we come to church, we try our best to use our mouths uh, to create our future and our destiny. Your destiny is becoming great. I say your destiny is becoming great. The Bible says that you shall fill your belly or rather your belly shall be filled by the fruit of your lips, by the fruit of your mouth. David said, when I was silent, my pain increased. So the more we keep quiet, the more we are oppressed by the devil. But none of us here will be oppressed by the devil. Jesus speaking about speaking words, he said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. That is John chapter 6, verse 63. Thank you. He also said in Mark chapter 11, verse 23, that whosoever shall say to this mountain. So whenever you encounter a mountain, that is not the time to keep quiet. That is the time to speak. And he said, whoever, whosoever shall speak to this mountain and say to it, eh, remove yourself or pluck yourself and throw yourself into the sea, it shall happen. Hallelujah. So the things that we say in our lives, they get root or they, they get planted. And some of them, some of the things that we say in our lives, they destroy some things. They, some of the words we speak, they build some things. They construct some things. I want to declare tonight that as you speak positively, something good is happening into your future. I say, as you repeat the things that I'm telling you to repeat, something good and something great is happening in your life. Shout a better hallelujah. Shout a better amen. So Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 22. Jeremiah chapter 4. How many of us were here when uh, our assistant bishop came to visit us on Sunday? Were you here on Sunday, last Sunday? Were you here? You are here in the spirit or you are here in the physical? <laughs> Our assistant bishop came uh, to see us on Sunday and he spoke some powerful words, some very powerful words and those words are going to affect our church and our lives. Are you shouting amen? amen. For those of you that were not here, uh, receive, uh, receive those, uh, those words in the name of Jesus. Whatever was declared on this altar, may it begin to affect your life. I say whatever was declared on this altar, may it begin to direct your life. Any good thing, and of course he spoke good things, good things. May those things begin to come to you. I say may those things begin to come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. So Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 22, let's read together for my people is foolish. Give us from uh, NKJV. Look at what God is saying. Let's read together. I want to go. For my people are foolish. Somebody say I'm not foolish. Say again I refuse to be foolish. He says my people are foolish. They have not known me. So anybody who doesn't know God is a foolish person. Isn't it? Anyone who doesn't know God. I had Dr. Mike Maddock is one of my my uh, my favorite uh, uh, mentors. Um, I had him saying that uh, wisdom does not come with age. Because if it did, then 
you would want to explain why some 17 years uh, person is in church while a 79 years person is not in church. That is to say, after living for 79 years, they have not yet gotten to know that uh, it doesn't profit any man to have everything and lose God. That is foolishness. Somebody say, I will not be foolish. They have lived for 100 years, yet they have not yet given their lives to Jesus. They have not found the wisdom to know that there is a place they are going after this life. But for a young person, 11 years old, giving their lives to Jesus, is that not wisdom? Great wisdom. Somebody say, I am wise. Oh, the fact that you are in church, you are very wise. Amen. Oh, I say the fact that you are here, you are very wise. To be in the house of God is wisdom. Amen. To be here looking for God, seeking God, some of you, you are losing money by being here. But you have decided you want to lose money so that you can get God. That is wisdom. Amen. May that wisdom work for you. I say may that wisdom work for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. They have not known me. They are silly. Silly children. Hmm. And they have no understanding. Somebody say I will never be silly. And they have no understanding. They are wise to do evil. Yani they know how to do evil. But to do good. They have no knowledge. They do not know how to do what pleases God. So they know how to do. They are wise in secular things. They are not wise in spiritual things. They are very wise when it comes to engineering. They are very wise when it comes to, you know, corruption. They are very wise when it comes to secular matters. But when it comes to spiritual things, they are foolish. I, I pray that we shall not be silly. Oh, I say we shall never be silly. Praise the Lord. Let's go to verse 23. The Bible says, I beheld the earth. And indeed it was without form. Now this is the implication. These are the consequences. Because they are foolish. Now look at their earth. Look at now their world. Their world eh, has no form. It is without form. And it is void. It has nothing inside. Your house is not, has nothing inside. It is void. Their world is void. Because they do not know how to seek God. Somebody say I will seek God. He says, and the heavens, they had no light. When I looked at their heaven, there was no light. There was no revelation. There was no insight from God. There was nothing that was coming from heaven. Why? Because they had no knowledge of God. They had no knowledge of God. Therefore, nothing was coming from heaven to them. There was no light above them, only darkness. When they pray, they don't get, they don't receive direction because they have no knowledge of God. Hey, somebody say, I will stay close to God. Oh, say, I will stay close to God. Continue verse 24. I beheld the mountains and indeed they trembled. Even what is supposed to shield them was weak. Their protection, their source of protection was weak. Their source of preservation, what was supposed to give them a base, what was supposed to give them stability was so shaky. Every kind of wind was blowing to them, was blowing on their, on their way. Why? Because they have no God. When we love God, when we know God, all these things, all these things are taken away from God. God makes sure that even the mountain or the things that are supposed to, to be, you know, to cover us becomes very steady and very strong. I pray that your job will never become weak. Your career will not be weak. Your anointing will not be weak. Your revelation will not be weaker. Your giftings will not be weak. In the mighty name of Jesus. And you see, verse, uh, go back to verse 24. And indeed they tremble and all the hills move back and forth. That shall not become your story. I said that will not become your story. Verse 25 says what? 
and I beheld and indeed there was no man. Even when there is scarcity of, you know, personality, scarcity of workforce, scarcity of manpower, it is because people have failed to seek God. Let us seek God dominion center. When we seek God, when God look at us, he will find people. When God is looking at us, he will see people that he can send to come and help us. When we seek God, there will be people that God will be able to send to come and support us, to come and help us. May that become our story. I say, may that become our story. And all the birds of the heavens had fled. Even what is supposed to bring a miracle to you, what is supposed to bring you know joy to you what is supposed to bring celebration to you God says because they have no knowledge of me it will not be available I say today everything that is supposed to give you joy because you are here and because you are seeking God may it become available for you if a job is supposed to give you joy it will continue to give you joy I, I say if your family is supposed to bring you joy. May that joy never cease. I say may that joy never cease. May celebrations in our lives never cease. May testimonies in our lives never lack. Let there be testimonies and testimonies in our lives in the name of Jesus. Oh let testimonies and testimonies come to us in the name of Jesus. Are you shouting a believing amen? Oh are you shouting a believing amen? Hallelujah. But the people who know their God shall be strong. Somebody say I will be strong. Everything starts with knowledge. Knowledge directs. Knowledge empowers. Knowledge builds. Everything starts with knowledge. Knowledge directs, knowledge empowers, knowledge builds. The Bible says that even the heavens and the earth were formed by wisdom and the knowledge of God. So knowledge is very important. Knowledge is very important. But the people who know their God shall be strong. Somebody say I will be strong. So strength is for the knowledgeable. He says they shall be strong. And also he says they shall do exploits. Great exploits. Exploits are deeds. Great deeds. He says they sh those who know their God shall do great exploits. Great things. So Greatness is for the knowledgeable. And great things, great things are for those who know God. Great things are kept for those who know God. Great marriages, great weddings are kept for people who know God. Great businesses are for the people who know God. Oh, great future and destiny is for people that know God. People who know their God. Somebody say, I wish to know my God better. Say, I, I wish to know my God even better. So, exploits are for people who know their God. Not for everybody. Understanding is the foundation of all development in life. If you are going to grow, if you are going to excel, if you are going to be promoted, understanding is a fundamental requirement. Understanding. May the Lord help us to understand him. May the Lord help us to gain more understanding of the things of the Spirit. That is my prayer for us in this church. 
that we shall not be known for many gymnastics, for many things. We shall be known for the knowledge and the deep knowledge of God and the things of God. I pray from this, from this sanctuary, great servants of God will be born. I pray and I know actually I know and I prophesy that great prophets are going to be born from this sanctuary. Great prophetess are going to emerge from our midst. Great evangelists are going to emerge from our midst. The secret to doing great things in this life is knowing God. Somebody say I will seek to know God. Great businessmen are people that will know they are God. And those people are going to be born out of this place. They are going to emerge from here. Great tycoons are coming out from here. The secret to greatness in life is knowing God. Somebody say, I will seek to know God. Ignorance will make you weak. But knowledge will make you stronger. Ignorance will always make you weak. Everywhere you go, ignorance will make you weak. A weak politician, a weak doctor, a weak lawyer, a weak business person, a weak Christian, a weak pastor, a weak minister. If you are ignorant, you will remain weak. But if you are, if you are knowledgeable and especially the knowledge of God, you will always become stronger. You will always be strong. You will always be strong. You will always be strong. When people are backsliding, you cannot backslide. When people are drifting away, you cannot drift away. When people are getting discouraged, you cannot be discouraged. When people are losing, you cannot lose. I say when people are losing, you cannot lose. When people are losing direction, you cannot lose direction. Hey, you will never ever lose direction in life. I say you will never ever lose direction in life. Ignorance makes you a wanderer. A wanderer. Somebody who doesn't know direction. But the knowledge of God makes you a wonder. Somebody say I will be a wonder. Oh say I am a wonder. Say I am for signs and wonders. Those who don't know God. They will wonder in life. He says when I looked at the heavens. There was no light. There was no direction for them. There was no revelation. There was no spiritual communication from heaven. And do you know there is no man who can prevail by their own strength. We need the hand of God. We need to be directed by God. We need God to show us the way. Because the Bible says that promotion is neither from the south nor from the east. But God is the judge. He raises one and he put another down. It is God who promotes her. If we are going to be promoting dominion center we need to know God. We need to be connected with God. We need to come close to God. We need to love God. If we are going to be promoted. I pray in the name of Jesus that the anointing to bring us close to God. The grace to make us love God. The hunger for God will be embedded in us. In the mighty name of the Lord. That we will love God of the days of our lives. There is no day we shall be called silly by God. There is no day we shall be called foolish by God. Because we neglected the place of seeking God. May we become a seekers of God. May we become seekers of God. I say may we become seekers of God. I pray that in this, on this altar and in this mountain the grace to seek God will fall upon us in the mighty name of Jesus lift up your hand and say I will seek after you O God I decree today you will never become a wanderer I say you will never lose direction I say you will never be, uh, be, uh, be, uh, be confused in life I say you will never find yourself in a dilemma 
I say you will never be stranded in this life. When you, you go to do business, may you never be confused. May you never be, be, be scattered. May you never be, be confused. May you never be confused. May you never be confused. When it comes to getting married, may you never be stranded. May you never be stranded. When it comes to doing ministry, may you never be stranded. In the mighty name of Jesus, when it comes to choice of career, may you never be stranded. When it comes to your gifting, may you never be stranded. May the Lord direct you. You shall never be a wanderer. You are not a wanderer. Somebody say, I am not a wanderer. Say, I refuse to be a wanderer. In the name of Jesus. Importance of spiritual growth. These are outcomes of spiritual growth. Number one, a close relationship with God. The outcomes of spiritual growth. When we become spiritual, when we grow in the Lord, one of the things that will happen is that we will have a close relationship with God. It is spirituality and the hunger for spirituality that draws men to God. It is the hunger for spirituality that draws men to God. A closer relationship gives you access to the very secret things of God. Very secret things of God. Very secret things of God. You cannot have the secret things of God if you are not spiritual. Spirituality makes you have a close relationship with God. You become intimate with God. So it opens the door for you to access the most deep things, the most secret things of God. Because you are spiritual. Only the spiritual can have access to the most secret things of God. The most secret things of God. Psalms 90. Psalms 90 verse 1. The Bible says that he that abideth, let's go there. Uh, verse chapter 91, sorry. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So the more we are spiritual, the more we, are, we can access the secret shadow of God. That intimacy, God is able to cover you. God is able to bring you closer, closer to himself. Amen. Amen. Jesus spoke to his disciples in Mark chapter 4 verse 11 and he told them to you it is given to know so there are people that are given or are allowed to know there are people who God allows them to know things to know things to know things even as human beings there are things I will not allow you to know unless you are very close to me. Unless we have very intimate relationship with you. If we, we are very close, there are things I will tell you. But for another person who is not very close, I will not be comfortable allowing them to know the things that you know. Praise the Lord. Just like nobody will open their door their bedroom for you unless you are very close to them. Your mother can only open her bedroom to her children and the children that are very close to her. Is that not so? There are children in the house when the mother sees them when the mother sees them he closes and locks all the doors. 
So it depends. You can be in the kingdom, but if you are not close with the Father, there are doors that will never be opened for you. Doors will be opened for other children who are closer to, to, to the Father. And you will be wondering why is it that I am in church for many years, yet I do not experience what other people experience. I do not see the miracles that other people keep on uh, testifying about in my life. But today I pray in the name of Jesus because you, you are here. I pray that the doors of, uh, of, uh, the, doors of the secret things of God will be opened for you. Are you shouting amen? I pray that the bedroom of God will be opened for you. I pray that God will allow you to have the most secret things. He says, unto them, unto you, it is given to know. But unto them, unto them, it only comes when it has some layers. If I'm going to tell them anything, I cannot tell them the, the most secret things. I, 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 have to, I have to make sure that it becomes more, uh, 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 more complicated for them. So that they do not understand my secret things. But as for you that are within... You that are inside, you that are close to me, I will allow you to know my secret things. May the Lord open his secret things unto your life. Oh, I say may the Lord open his secret things to you. So that when you pray, you will get direction. So that when you ask him to open a door, he opens for you. So that when you ask him to talk to you, he talks to you. May the Lord begin to speak to you. May you begin to hear the voice of God. I said, may you begin to hear the voice of God. May heaven not close for you. Heaven will not close for you again. I say, heaven will not close for us again. In the mighty name of Jesus. I declare in dominion center, things will not be dry for us. As we continue to seek God, I say as we continue to love God, our lives are not going to be dry. We will not have dry services in the mighty name of Jesus. Things are going to become great here. We are going to see the hand of God moving. We are going to see the power of God moving. Somebody shout amen. You can't be allowed to access very expensive things if you are not close. So some people will get miracles, but cheap miracles. But there are those that will get very expensive miracles. Very precious things of God. For example, I can't allow just anybody to drive my car. Is that not so? Even you, you can't just allow anybody to touch phone. But there are some people who can comfortably be with your phone and you are not worried. Isn't it? It depends with the level of relationship. Somebody say relationship. Yeah, your wife can touch your phone without, you don't even care. You don't, you are not worried. Whether they are going to use M-Pesa or not, you are not worried. At the end of the day, they are your this is your spouse, this is your husband, this is your wife, amen. So you don't care, hallelujah. There is somebody who touches your, 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 your wallet and you're worried. Another person touches your wallet and you have no problem. It all depends with the relationship. I pray that God will allow your hand to get to his pocket. Oh, my prayer is that God will allow your hand to get to the treasures of heaven. Hallelujah. So there are people who can get things from heaven, but not very important things. Some simple, simple things, simple, simple miracles. Uh, you pray for, uh, for some simple, simple things and you get. You get like a job. You get a, a job that is not paying you a lot of money. So that one God allows you to get it. But for those very precious gifts you find that you are not getting. There are people who have stayed in church for many years, but they have not received the Holy Spirit. I say that is going to change here. I pray that that is going to change for us. We cannot just be having carnal things, simple things, things that are not precious in the eyes of God and in the hands of God. We will also get those precious things. Amen. There are people who have stayed for very many years in church, but they have never been gifted by any, with any gift. You ask somebody, what is your gift? They do not know. 
they do not have any gift. That is changing from today. As we dive deeper in the things of God, may your relationship with God allow you to access those precious things from heaven. May something very precious come to you. Lift up your hand and say, my father, my God, please allow me to access precious gifts, precious things from heaven in the name of Jesus.